Hello there, I'm Walter Benaziak and this is Top 5. With Alien Covenant coming out next week, I thought now would be as good of a time as any to dive into the filmography of its legendary director, Ridley Scott. I have a poll up right now on my Twitter, at awesome underscore Walter, asking you guys what the next subject on Top 5 should be. Make sure you go vote and get your voice heard. Ridley Scott is without a doubt one of the most influential directors of the last 40 years. His films range from sci-fi horror to road trip movies and everything in between. Jumping onto the scene with his first feature film in 1977, Scott has built a legacy that is of undeniable quality. The four-time Best Director Oscar nominee has had films that quite literally changed the game for how some genre movies are made. At 79 years old, he shows no signs of slowing down and continues to pump out films that have become events to see in theaters. These are my top five best Ridley Scott movies. Number five, The Martian. Prior to Alien Covenant, this was Scott's latest film, which came out in 2015 and starred Matt Damon. There was a lot of buzz surrounding it, and that wasn't for nothing. Having to leave Mars in a hurry due to a fierce storm, a group of astronauts leave behind Mark Watney after he's assumed dead. Watney actually survived the storm and is now stranded on Mars with very limited supplies. On Earth, NASA works day and night to try to bring him home. However, once his crew finds out he's still alive, they start to form their own idea for a rescue mission. Based on Andy Ware's 2011 novel, this film proves Ridley Scott still has it. I didn't have a chance to see this in theaters, but after watching it, I'm sorry I missed out. As usual, the visuals that Mr. Scott puts together are beyond compare, and I'm sure they look 10 times better up on the big screen. Matt Damon playing Mark Watney benefits the film greatly. His situation is dire, but the character's positivity and ingenuity combines for a much more pleasant and fun viewing experience than what we could have had with this very serious premise. In the face of overwhelming odds, I'm left with only one option. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. That's the thing I like most about this movie. It could have been a very serious affair, but its sense of humor from the whole cast makes it unique from other space stories that could alienate the viewer after an overexposure to the hopeless void of space. You think he means it like, are you kidding me? You know? Mm -hmm. Or like, are you kidding me? I think it might be the second one. Really? Uh-huh. Could be the first one. The cast is great here. Jeff Daniels, Donald Glover, Chiwetel Iafor, and Sean Bean. That's right, Sean Bean being some of the standouts. And Sean Bean lives! Sean Bean lives! Seriously though, it's awesome to see him in a big, good movie. I want more Sean Bean. You can never have too much Sean Bean. The climax of The Martian is truly spectacular. It had me on the edge of my seat and needs to be seen. Just a great movie. It's also a great sequel to Interstellar. Number four. Gladiator. This was an epic that kickstarted Scott's partnership with Russell Crowe and is packed with memorable scenes and lines. When Emperor Marcus Aurelius is murdered by his jealous son Commodus, a favored general of the Roman army, Maximus, becomes a target of the new Caesar. Maximus was to become the new emperor before Marcus was killed, and after refusing to pledge loyalty to Commodus, he is sentenced to death. After escaping his execution and fleeing to his home, he discovers his family dead as Maximus himself is put into slavery and is later forced to fight as a gladiator when his traveling group returns to the Colosseum in Rome. Just gonna get this out of the way first? Yes, the Pirates of the Caribbean music is in this movie, and yes, it is distracting. Of course we know the first Pirates movie didn't come out until a few years after this, but it's so entrenched with that franchise that it is noticeably distracting when it plays here. The rest of Hans Zimmer's music is possibly one of his best, but that just always stuck out to me. Now that that's out of the way, Gladiator is a hell of a film. A lot of the action and visuals still hold up, and while the movie can feel dated in tone to other similar type movies of that period, it pretty much stands on its own as a now classic, larger than life tale that may feature Russell Crowe's most memorable character. Are you not entertained? Loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Father to a murdered son. Husband to a murdered wife. 
and I will have my vengeance. The character motivations are clear, and we're rooting for Maximus from the beginning. Joaquin Phoenix's Commodus is appropriately creepy and a very good foil to our hero. He plays the new emperor very over the top, and it works pretty well. Am I not merciful? You loved my father, I know. But so did I. That makes us brothers, doesn't it? Gladiator's brutal action is still effective 17 years later and possibly one of the reasons it took home the Oscar for Best Picture that year. Gladiator is still a great watch and one of Ridley Scott's signature films. Number three, American Gangster. Another team up with Crow, but this time with the incomparable Denzel Washington playing opposite him as real life drug lord Frank Lucas. For years, Frank Lucas was under the wing of one of Harlem's biggest mobsters. After his death, Frank assumes his spot and starts bringing in a very potent drug from Vietnam called Blue Magic. With the success of his new empire rising, Frank brings in his whole family from North Carolina and builds a power structure that nearly guarantees his success. Meanwhile, veteran cop Richie Roberts sees the changes happening in his city and is appointed as leader of a special unit to track down the head of the new drug problem in New York. Russell Crowe is great in this movie, but Denzel definitely ends up stealing the show. He's ruthless and relentless here, one of his best bad guy roles. There you go, 20%. Crow also turns in a very strong performance as Officer Richie Roberts. Their separate but parallel stories happening throughout the movie builds tension from the beginning. They're doing Look at good this. cop the work. What the fuck is that? I earned it doing good cop work. You murdered him. I earned it getting shot at. You murdered a guy. You murdered him. You robbed his money, then you called me to get you out of it. That makes me an accessory after the fact, motherfucker. It's a great crime film that keeps its leads apart until the end of the movie. When they finally meet, the resulting scene is fantastic. I don't represent nothing but Frank Lucas. You sure? Black businessman like you, you represent progress. The kind of progress that's gonna see them lose a lot of money. With you out of the way, everything can return to normal. This movie is driven by a pair of great turns from its leads. It's also a long film, but it earns that length. Check it out if you haven't. Number two. Matchstick Men. I just brought this movie up a couple weeks ago as one of Nicolas Cage's best performances. What's even better than Cage's performance is the movie itself. Based on Eric Garcia's novel of the same name, Roy and his partner Frank are con artists who are very good at what they do. As Roy's prominent OCD starts to worsen, he finds his long lost daughter, Angela, and with his new medication, his symptoms start to subside. When Angela shows an interest in entering the family business, Roy struggles with keeping his daughter innocent to his con man crimes or bonding with her. As all of this is happening, a big job involving a businessman is a large enough scam to potentially be dangerous. I feel like this is probably the most underrated and overlooked Ridley Scott movie. It's got a great story with great characters and is just this little film that I really connected with. It's not a blockbuster or a big grand tale like some of Scott's better known work. It's very character focused and character driven with a lot of heart and emotion that combine with a lighter tone and result in a great movie. Never play somebody who isn't buying what you're selling. You're thinking, daddy, daddy, what am I selling? Well, what you're selling is you. And the older the better, but beware of couples. You don't want anyone whispering your marks here but you. And for God's sake, make sure the person you're conning isn't conning you. A strong part of the film is its soundtrack and how it's used at certain points. In some cases, a soundtrack that contains too many well-known songs can be a detriment, but not here. Frank Sinatra and Bobby Darin were definitely used appropriately. The main performances were phenomenal here, especially Nick Cage and Alison Lohman. Their chemistry is heartwarming, heartbreaking, and so much more. Love these two together. <laughs> Uh, that is wrong what you did! You're not a bad guy, you know, you're just not a very good one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I let you down. I'll also say that this movie has a strong rewatchability. I wouldn't mind seeing it a few more times in the near future while introducing it to new people.
The cherry on top is that we get to see Nick Cage totally freak out in one scene. Have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and be until you pissed blood? The they're, bullshit, they're man! Prefects! Suplefem. Prefects! If you haven't seen this movie, I'd seriously suggest watching it when you have the chance. Definitely one of Mr. Scott's best. Ridley Scott has four decades worth of great movies, and his best can't be contained to just five spots. So, before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions. And the number one best Ridley Scott movie is Alien. How could it be anything else? Alien is simultaneously one of the best sci-fi and horror movies ever made. Deep in space, the starship Nostromo is traveling home when its crew is suddenly awakened from cryo sleep to check out a distress call on a nearby planet. When one of them investigates a crashed ship that is the source of the call, he discovers a nest of eggs with living organisms inside. One of them attaches itself to his face, and upon being brought back on board, terror beyond all understanding begins to engulf the rest of the crew. Sets, acting, effects, tone, they all work to maximum effect in this original Alien film. It's an iconic, genre-shaping movie that really does have it all. Some of my favorite stuff is the slow build of suspense and atmosphere. I'm not a huge horror movie fan, but when it's done this way, I'm always into it. The visuals are some of Scott's best, with frames that just stick with you long after viewing. That ties into how this film was shot, which worked to perfection, especially in how they shot the xenomorph when it shows up. The effects here are amazing. Just seeing most of these practically done made me appreciate it so much more. These kinds of effects are really a lost art nowadays. I can't lie to you about your chances, but you have my sympathies. One thing I don't think people mention quite as much about this movie is the acting. The natural tension that builds up affects how the characters treat each other, and some of it is very, very natural. Well, let's talk about killing it. We know it's using the air shafts. Will you listen to me, Parker? Shut up! Let's hear it. Of course, Alien has a great payoff and isn't just all build-up. It spawned five sequels and created one of the most recognizable Alien designs in movie history, a true landmark movie. As with all of these videos, this is a subjective list. I'm sure a lot of you have a completely different top five for Ridley Scott, and that speaks to how good of a director he is. Narrowing this one down was far from a simple task. As Mr. Scott continues to make quality films, my own personal top five might even need adjusting in the future. I want to hear what you guys think. What is your favorite Ridley Scott movie? Leave a comment and let me know. For more content, subscribe to my personal channel, youtube.com slash awesomewalter, and follow me on Twitter to take part in more polls about what may be covered in the future. Come back next week when we take a look at five films that aren't quite up to snuff for this renowned director.